Part 3. Hydro Costs and the Formula Costing Method In the previous parts of this video, I showed how Rett's Green Expert can be used to investigate the energy performance of a run of river hydro project. But I also expressed a lack of confidence in my conclusions about the profitability of the project due to uncertainty in cost estimates. For small hydro projects, the majority of the initial costs arise in civil works and other project elements that vary greatly from site to site. Fortunately, Rett's Green Expert includes a formula costing method that helps refine cost estimates based on site characteristics. Right now, I have a level 1 analysis of the cost for this project. The initial costs and the O&M costs that I took from the cost database and pasted into the energy page are copied over to this page. I'm going to refine the initial cost estimate, however, by considering its components in detail. This is best done in Level 2 or Level 3. When I switch to either Level 2 or 3 from Level 1, I see that while the annual O&M costs from the energy page are still there, the initial cost estimate has disappeared. This reflects the assumption made in Rett's screen that since we have chosen Level 2 or 3, we want to break up the total initial cost into its contributing components. Rett's Green leaves this apportioning of costs to us. Many of the costs for a hydro project will be for various civil works. These vary from site to site. In level 3, Rett's Green provides a list of these items. It is accessed by selecting Hydro Civil Works in the drop-down list for specific project costs in the Balance of System and Miscellaneous section of the initial costs. If I already have a study that estimates these costs, I could use this study, in combination with suggested values found for each item in Rett's Green Help, to fill out this section. But it is not easy, particularly for non-experts. Fortunately, in Level 3, Rett's Green provides us with a tool, called the Hydro Formula Costing Method, to help estimate project costs. I open this tool from the menu. The tool contains a list of cells where I specify key site characteristics. Based on these characteristics, the tool estimates costs for the feasibility study, development, engineering, turbine, transmission line, substation, and balance of system. Note that it does not break down costs to the level of detail allowed in the specific project costs section. The first characteristic to be specified is the country. This project is in Canada. Next, we must specify whether or not this is a cold climate site. Cold climates often increase costs. HELP clarifies that the climate can be considered cold if there are 180 or more days per year with frost or temperatures below freezing. Sometimes the answer will be obvious. For example, if my project is in the tropics, or anywhere that can be easily judged to be warmer than southern Canada, I can most likely specify no for cold climate and the following cell for the number of frost days disappears. If I'm unsure of the number of frost days, there are a number of ways that this can be determined. If the project is in Canada, I can consult one of the two maps included in Rett's Green Help and accessed by the map icon. For this site, for example, the map indicates that the site lies near the boundary of the yellow and the light blue zones and therefore experiences around 195 frost days per year. If the site is outside of Canada, I might find similar information from local or national meteorological offices. If I can't find the frost days in this manner, NASA provides an estimate through a website where I can get climate parameters for a specified latitude and longitude. For this particular project, I enter the site latitude of 47 degrees and site longitude of minus 72 degrees and I find climate data, including an estimate of the number of frost days per year. The NASA site provides climate data on a grid with 0.5 degrees of latitude and longitude separating estimates. Note that this grid spacing is generally adequate, but if your site is in a mountainous region, within a 0.5 degree by 0.5 degree area, there may be considerable variation in the frost days per year due to variation in the altitude. For this site, I'll enter 195 frost days per year based on the maps in Rett's Green. For the next parameters, I can simply copy over the values that I entered in the energy page. 
The design flow is 70 cubic meters per second. The gross head is 80 meters. There are two Francis turbines. Using these inputs, RedScreen proposes that this project be classified as a small facility type as opposed to a mini or micro project. RedScreen's help explains how it makes this determination based on the runner diameter and the flow rate. In general, one should select the same type as RedScreen proposes, but there are some exceptional situations, listed in the help, where one might override the RedScreen suggestion. Let's assume that this project will require the construction of a new 200 meter long dam built from rock available at the site. I change existing dam to no, indicate a crest length of 200 meters, and tell RedScreen that yes, there is a rock available at the site. For the maximum hydraulic losses, I carry over 6% from the energy page. I'm tempted to carry over 2% for the miscellaneous losses, but that would be a mistake. If I look in help, I'll see that the miscellaneous losses in the energy page refer to parasitic electrical consumption, transformer losses, and the like. In the formula costing page, the miscellaneous losses are hydraulic losses, not occurring in the tunnel, canal, or penstock. I'll enter 1% here. The miscellaneous losses, plus any losses in the tunnel, canal, and penstock must not exceed the maximum hydraulic losses. I'm going to assume that a 1.5 km road must be constructed to the site, and therefore I will click on the checkbox beside road construction. Some cells open as a result. This is not just a tote road that will be abandoned after construction. It will be needed to access the project for ongoing O&M. Therefore, I'll select No for tote road only. For difficulty of terrain, I'll look at the descriptions given under help. This is hilly terrain with rocky outcrops, so I'll select something around 3 based on this description. This particular project will also require a tunnel, so I click on that checkbox. From a description of the project, I'll estimate that the tunnel will be 750 meters long and half of its length will be lined. I'll enter 4% for the allowable tunnel head loss factor. I'll assume that the construction will be mechanized. No canal is required, but two identical 100 meter long penstocks are. If I enter 1% for the allowable penstock head loss factor, the sum of the miscellaneous losses, canal losses, and penstock losses will be 6%. This does not exceed the maximum hydraulic losses I specified earlier, so this is physically feasible. RedScreen estimates that the penstocks will be almost 3 meters in diameter and will have a wall thickness of just under 1 centimeter. I need to specify the distance to borrow pits from where rock, clay, sand, and or fill may be taken. RedScreen's help indicates that if the distance is unknown, I should enter 8 kilometers, and this is what I do. I'll need a transmission line to take the power of this project to the nearest point of interconnection with the grid. This is a central grid tied project. If it were off-grid or connected to a community or industrial remote grid, I would select off-grid or isolated grid respectively. Examining a map, I determine that the distance to the nearest point of interconnection is 10 kilometers. For the 44 megawatt output of this project, a voltage of 69 kilovolts or higher will likely be required. I'll enter 69 kV. Help indicates that the difficulty of terrain parameter varies between 1 for flat terrain and 2 for mountainous terrain. The site is between these two extremes, so I will enter 1.5. Drawing on these site characteristics, the formula costing method has provided estimates of the various components of the initial costs. The total cost estimate is 95 million Canadian dollars, based on 2006 costs. I expect that inflation has raised costs since then by around 30%. To reflect that, I'll set the adjustment factor to 1.3 for all line items. I could vary this adjustment factor by line item if I had reason to believe that some of these costs were unrealistic, but I won't do that here. The total inflation adjusted amount is $123 million. At this point, a couple of very important observations must be made about the accuracy of cost estimates originating in the hydro formula costing method. First, this estimate is merely a ballpark figure for a pre-feasibility study 
and may be grossly in error if particular site conditions result in an unusually expensive or inexpensive project. The hydro formula costing method does not replace a site analysis and careful cost estimation exercise, although it can serve as a check on its results. Second, the error for individual items may be very high. Fortunately, if the errors are relatively unbiased, when adding up the line items, positive and negative errors tend to cancel, and the total initial cost estimate can have an accuracy exceeding that of the line items. Now I'll copy these results from the hydro formula costing method back to the cost page. Having done that, I go to the finance page. Due to these revised initial costs, the project internal rate of return on equity has gone from around 6% to 11%. Can I conclude that this is a profitable project? Given a discount rate of 9%, yes, though I must be cautious. This conclusion, though based on a site-specific estimation of project costs, is one that still has a large margin of uncertainty. If I'm serious about this project, my next step should be to refine my cost estimates further through a careful costing of key project structures and components. I could also use the sensitivity and risk analysis to see the effect on financial viability of a change in the initial costs. That completes this presentation on hydro project costs. The final part of this video shows an alternative hydrology method. This method is currently applicable to Canada only, so if your projects are located elsewhere, it may not be relevant to you. In any case, I hope that this was useful. If so, you may want to follow the other Red Screen Expert videos found by clicking on the e-learning icon at the right of the home screen under the File tab.